My name is Steve Schulte, and I'm the Dangerous Goods Specialist at ChemAdvisor. I'm going to cover the international transport of dangerous goods support. Do you know what you're shipping and how to ship it? More importantly, do you have the tools you need to do so? First of all, let me explain the difference between the terms hazardous materials and dangerous goods as they're both used interchangeably. Hazardous materials is a name commonly used in U.S. and it means a substance or material that the Secretary of Transportation has determined is capable of posing an unreasonable risk to health, safety, property when transported in commerce. Dangerous goods, not unlike hazardous materials, is the international standard covered in the UN recommendations on the transport of dangerous goods. The definition of dangerous goods covers articles or materials capable of posing significant risk to people, health, property, or the environment when transported in quantity. It includes com items of common use, such as aerosol cans, perfumes, and paints. And as you can tell by the definitions, they're both similar, just two different names. What are some of the common hazardous materials dangerous goods? Some of the common hazardous materials dangerous goods are products like oil, antifreeze, gasoline, charcoal starter, paints, batteries, perfumes, bleach, household cleaners, and insecticides, all of which of these are commonly used. So how are the hazardous materials dangerous goods regulations developed? The transport of dangerous goods regulations starts at the UN Committee of Experts on the Transport of Dangerous Goods and on, and on the globally harmonized system of classification and labeling. They meet twice a year in June and December. They work on a biennium, meaning they decide on updates or new recommendations every two years. The recommendations are then printed in the UN Recommendations on the Transport of Dangerous Goods, commonly referred to as the Orange Book. The recommendations are then reviewed and adopted completely or in part by 49 CFR, DOT, IMO with the International Maritime Dangerous Goods Code for vessel shipments, and other national regulations like ADR, European Dangerous Goods Regulations for Transport by Road, RID, Regulations for Transport of Dangerous Goods Within Europe by Rail, ADN, which are the Regulations for the Transport of Dangerous Goods in Europe on Inland Waterways, TDG, which is the Transport of Dangerous Goods Within Canada, and ADG, Transport of Dangerous Goods Within Australia. There are other country countries that have regulations as well. These are just a few of the ones. So the transportation regulatory sources one would need to support international transport of dangerous goods are the United Nations recommendations of, on, of dangerous goods, commonly referred to as the Orange Book, the ADR, the Euro European Agreement concerning the international carriage of dangerous goods by road, ACAO and IATA, which are the air, da air dangerous goods regulations, TDG, which is the transport of dangerous goods for Canada, IMDG, which is the International Maritime Dangerous Goods Code, and 49 CFR, which is our, the Hazardous Materials Regulations. The various transport regulation sources provide criteria to determine what dangerous goods or hazard class substances may fall into. There can be more than one hazard class that a substance fall, falls into. The dangerous goods classes are explosives, Gases, compressed flammable and toxic, flammable liquids, flammable solids, self-reactives, dangerous when wet, oxidizers, organic peroxides, toxics, infectious substances, radioactive, corrosive, and class nine, miscellaneous. These are the hazards, the miscellaneous are the hazards that don't fit into any other criteria or any other hazard classes. So one has to manually look up the information required prior to transporting to determine what the classification should be and what the identification number and description, hazard class, and packing group should be, which all have to appear on the shipping paper. They'll need to find out the types of label required, the type of packaging, 
and any additional marking required, and there may be exceptions to the regulations that they can utilize. Looking up the material in the transport regulations becomes even more difficult when each country may have their own regulation, and each mode of transport also has its own set of regulations. There is not one source that provides all the dangerous goods, hazardous materials, transport requirements. This is where ChemAdvisor can help, provide support, providing the one regulatory source for transportation of hazardous materials, dangerous goods. What can ChemAdvisor provide? Let me tell you what ChemAdvisor can provide in the way of support that will make the job of transporting international hazardous materials, dangerous goods, much less time consuming. ChemAdvisor, through its regulatory database, commonly referred to as the Lali Desktop Administrator, contains 15 regulatory sources that are updated quarterly. Those regulatory sources are the Australian Dangerous Goods, the European Inland Waterway Regulations, International Maritime Dangerous Goods Regulations, European Road and Rail Dangerous Goods Regulations, the DOT Regulations, IATA Air Regulations, and ICAO Air Regulations, Transport of Dangerous Goods Canada Regulations, the China Dangerous Goods Regulations, the UN Dangerous Goods Regulations, Japan's Dangerous Goods Regulations, and Mexico's Dangerous Goods Regulations. Now, the transport database looks like this. This is our ADR database. As you can see, it provides the UN number. It also provides a CAS number, but then the proper shipping name, a place for to be checked off if it, if it requires a technical name, the hazard class, classification code, a packing group, and hazard labels. It contains everything that the dangerous goods list in the ADR regulations contains. The Lolly Desktop Administrator also contains 11 dangerous goods lists that are updated quarterly. The lists are the Canadian Marine Pollutant List, the China Dangerous Goods List, a list of the ADR tunnel codes, the International Maritime Dangerous Goods List for Marine Pollutants, a Transportation Advisor which lists all the substance, Emergency Response Guide Numbers which are linked to the UN numbers, DOT Hazardous Substances and Reportable Quantities, and the Marine Pollutant List for 10% or greater and the Severe Marine Pollutant List. It also provides an organic peroxide table and the radionuclides and reportable quantities. ChemAdvisor can also provide training. DOT training, IATA training, IMDD training, International Dangerous Goods training, recertification training in DOT, IATA, and IMDG. Trainings performed at ChemAdvisor in Pittsburgh, or we can come to the customer site and provide on-site on training. ChemAdvisor also provides consulting, dangerous goods classifications, dangerous goods classification reviews, on-site dangerous goods audit to determine if you're ready for a visit from a DOT or from an inspection agency. ChemAdvisor has a certified dangerous goods safety advisor that can perform dangerous goods safety advisor reports. We can also provide special permit submissions and responds to responses to notices of violation. Some other additional support, ChemAdvisor can provide letters of interpretation, updates on future changes to the hazardous materials dangerous goods regulations, updating dangerous goods in SAP. So consider using ChemAdvisor for all your hazardous materials dangerous goods needs. There's much more that we could talk about. So please feel free to call or email if you have any questions regarding the International Transport of Dangerous Goods support that ChemAdvisor can provide. Thank you for your time.